In this video, we're going to discuss how to model a curtain using nerve modeling techniques for an, uh, for this wall. And um, again, the reason I'm going to be using uh, nerve modeling techniques for this is because of the odd shape of this uh, kind of round wall over here. I could very well use uh, a cylinder, but uh, I believe I can get a better result by using the nerve modeling techniques. So I'm going to start by going into the top viewport. I'm going to switch to wireframe. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, Bezier curve tool. Seems like I already drew something here. So I'll do that. And I'm going to be using my Bezier curve tool. So I'm going to start drawing. just along the window here okay it looks like that's gonna work pretty well I'm gonna go back into my perspective um, my curve was uh, drawn at zero here and I uh, noticed that uh, the pivot point is still at the zero 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 location so I want to make sure I actually center that pivot to <coughs> my splines uh, for easier access then I'm just gonna move it up uh, I can go back into my top viewport maybe modify it a little bit just a little bit nothing too crazy I think this is gonna work just fine so um, switching back into my pers actually now that I'm here I wanna um, the second thing that I'm gonna do it's create a uh, nerve circle. Again, I can't see it because I'm not in wireframe mode, but it's right there. And then I'm going to use my snap, uh, my snap to curves tool to be able to snap the circle to my original spline. I'm going to go back to perspective, and I need to modify this a little bit because it's a little bit too large so I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees C axis and then I'm gonna change the radius of it a little bit down um, 0.1 perhaps I think that'll do just fine and so what's happening here is that I'm going to be using uh, this uh, nerve circle to define the shape of my nerve and I'm going to be using this line or this spline to define the path of it. So I'm going to select my shape, my path, and then go into surfaces and click on extrude. And then it's going to extrude a nerve across my path using the shape of the circle. Uh, next thing that I'm going to address is the fact that I'm getting a little bit of weird shade over here and again that's usually uh, due to lack of uh, geometry <coughs> so I want to go in here and add a couple of curve points uh, and again anything that I do to my curve is going to affect my surface so I'm just adding a point there I'm going to come here to the end and do the same thing something like that and then I want to go into uh, edit curves and insert those knots and it just added a little bit of resolution there so I don't see uh, that being a problem I can always move these points around uh, I'm just gonna leave it as is for the sake of the demonstration I'm also having a little bit of a weird thing going on here uh, probably happened while I was drawing the curve and again I can always come here and just fix it We're bringing down this and that should work fine for now <coughs> alright so I have uh, the rod the next thing I want to do is start drawing in my curtain <coughs> for that I'm gonna go back into my top viewport 
and I'm going to be using uh, my pencil curve tool and that's going to allow me to draw in the cr uh, a very organic looking um, curve so go back into wireframe I want to make sure that this curve kind of follows along the shape of this uh, so something along the lines of this again I just want to make sure that it looks very organic I can stop right here alright so again pivots right at zero, zero, 0 so I want to modify that and align it to my object then bring it up I want it to be right underneath that rod right there Okay, I don't want to use the snapping tool for that um, then I'm just going to go ahead and do a duplicate of it bring it down I want to make sure it kind of covers the window a little bit <coughs> then I'm going to go ahead and select these two and loft them. So surfaces, loft, and it's created a pretty organic shape <laughs> for a curtain. Uh, so that looks pretty nice. And if I wanted to, I could also come in here into the surface itself and uh, modify it a little bit just to kind of give it a little bit of interest. And also keeping in mind that there's still a dependency between the curves and the piece of geometry that I just created. So anything that I do to change the curve is going to affect the surface and again just to demonstrate that I'm going to go into the control vertex and just kind of change the bottom one a little bit and again it's just to create a little bit uh, of interest in the model uh, make it a little not so computer-y I suppose um, just kind of change it up a little bit so it's not the same as the top part so that should work and uh, if I wanted to add even more interest um, again uh, one thing that we're seeing right here once I go into my control vertex is that I do have some points here that I can manipulate uh, but I can add a little bit more resolution to this if I if I want to be able to have more points and to do that I'm just gonna be inserting isoporms to my surface so to do that I'm gonna right click right on my surface go to isoporm if I wanted to create more geometry uh, like this I would just select that and then just drag it uh, but we actually try to create a division here so we need to create we need to select the top and just kind of drag it down I'm actually going to create two so I'm just going to go to the bottom hold and shift and just create that and again this in itself doesn't do anything it's just kind of like a marker of where I want those divisions to be so then I gotta go into edit nerves and make sure that I insert those isoporms and as you can see now my uh, curtain has a little bit more resolution and I can always kind of come here and again the idea is for it to have maybe a little bit of a, um, uh, a little bit of shape to it make it a little bit more interesting um, if I wanted to I could also use my nonlinear deformers or my lattice under my animation mode to be able to give it a little bit more interest. But I'm going to stop right here on the curtain and then I'm going to move on to I want to create also uh, basically what's ho holding the curtain up and uh, in this instance or for, more, for most curtains it's usually a piece of cloth that just kind of surrounds the rod so I'm just going to be uh, I'm going to be creating that with uh, by, by means of using lofting as well. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and select this curve I'm going to make a couple of copies of this because um, I want this to kind of follow along uh, it needs to kind of be uh, it, it needs to kind of come out from here and kind of go around and kind of match here so it's going to be based on, on this uh, spline so I'm just going to go ahead and make a copy of that move it outside okay then I'm going to take this do another control D move it up a little bit um, I want to do the same thing here um, and just make a copy of it and then move it back a bit 
And again, the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, the process of lofting, um, I'm going to be able to select a ring of uh, splines that I'm going to be creating that's going to pretty much surround this uh, rod over here. So I'm going to make a couple more. Uh, Control D, copies here. <coughs> Um, at this point, I actually want to change the shape of my curve a little bit, because otherwise it's it's not going to be able to wrap around pretty well. So I want it to be a little more straight than what the original was over here. So I'm going to I'm going to go into my control vertex and move some of my points around. And again, I just want to make sure that it makes sense for uh, this shape to kind of go around um, the rod. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this for a second. I'm just gonna go ahead and just uh, change this curve a little bit, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm I'm back. <coughs> um, all right, as you can see, I kind of changed the shape of the duplicates that I created, and then I just went around and basically drew uh, uh, make copies of of that same spline and, and placed it around. So now the the last thing for me to do at this point. It's just selecting all the curves in the right order uh, to make sure that I created a loft that's going to go around uh, this uh, metal rod right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and select all the ones going around here and closing on this side. Okay, the last one is right there. Not that, but this one. <coughs> and again, I started here and I selected it all the way around until I finish with the one that I copied initially. Then I want to go to surfaces and loft. And all right. So the nice thing is that it's, it looks like it started right off of where a curtain. And I started. We are having a couple of collapsing issues. As you can see, a curtain, it's kind of going through that rod a little bit. Some funky he stuff here in the back. Uh, but again, it's something that you can kind of solve directly. I mean, you don't have to undo it and just kind of uh, redo it again. You can always just edit the curves here and it'll affect the. The nerve that you, this uh, surface that we just created. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit these curves a little bit. And again, I want to make sure that I'm selecting only either the curve. I can actually also go locally into this surface that I just created and move some points around. But I, I think it's a little better if I actually go into the curves themselves and make some changes uh, locally there. So let's just move some stuff around. Like that. Trying to get to the control point here, so I can I can just edit this. Maybe it's better if I just go into a wireframe mode and just select it directly. It does seem to work a little better. And it looks like this is the last part over here where I see a little bit of uh, intersection. So that worked out really well. And the uh, last thing you can do is uh, sometimes keeping the splines in your scene can be a little bothersome. So uh, <coughs> if you think you're going to be able to, you need to come back and make some changes to what we just did here. <coughs> you can, uh, I would just select them all. And again, I'm kind of uh, using my selector objects right here only. I deselected everything else. 
but I'm just basically going to select them all and add them into their own layer and just hide them. And okay, now we have a curtain for a room. And I can always go in here and also manipulate directly also um, the surfaces themselves. So sometimes the, the curves, uh, again, there's always a dependency there, but you can always just kind of go in here directly and, and, and manipulate these. Um, so again, just to uh, <coughs> uh, reiterate everything that we just uh, did, we basically created a curtain rod by using a... <coughs> A, a spline with the shape of the wall over here and then I created a circle spline and uh, I utilized surf extrude and by doing that uh, it extruded on the shape of the circle along that spline <coughs> and then I used my pencil vizier to create this interesting kind of looking uh, uh, cloth pattern for this um, um, curtain then I made a copy of it and I lofted it. <coughs> I also show you how to insert isoparms so you can go in there and add a little bit more interest to your model, make it a little bit uh, uh, more appealing. And lastly, we ended up using lofting to be able to create this piece of cloth kind of going around uh, the rod as if uh, uh, as the part of the cloth that's supposed to be holding the whole curtain together. Um, Alright, that covers that, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you.